Speaking of uh, community <laughs> building, I'm going to put it out there. I don't think there's anybody better that we've seen. And she's one of us. She is within the community. She holds it down for us. She flies out to other countries to make things happen. We have the one and only maybe Neda. And she, I nominated Diamond. You nominated her as well for the Community <laughs> Builder Award for the World of Women Gala. It, it's a no-brainer. She holds it down for us. She holds it down for World of Women. She is the GOAT of IRL events. It's her superpower. So everybody vote for maybe Neda when it is time. We love you, maybe. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Welcome to the damn show. I'm Diamond Hands. We got maybe Netta and Atare. We're going to be rocking an incredible episode today. Just want to say thanks for tuning in. <laughs> thanks, Diamond. How are you doing? I'm solid. I mean, beautiful day here on the West Coast, just loving life. How about you? How are you doing? Um, I have a funny little anecdote. So it's now fall. We're mid-October, getting closer to November. And uh, back where I'm from up in the North A, you know, it starts getting chilly. And I would usually for, you know, a very long time go and get warm, hot mocha drinks and all that. <laughs> and so on my way here to record this, I get up and I can feel it in my body that it's fall, but the weather doesn't reflect it. <laughs> but I'm still like, I need, I need like a hot mocha drink, even though it's hot outside, just to feel that fall energy. So I got that. I put on a hoodie, even though it's not the most weather appropriate, but um, I'm dealing with a new thing in my life right now. So, but maybe you got the fall colors going with that sweater. How are you? Yeah. Um, I'm feeling pretty good and uh, I love fall. I actually love all the seasons. So I'm not that person that it's there like just waiting for the, that one season to hit. I love all the seasons and in each season there are interesting and cool things to do. Uh, I think that's why I ended up moving here uh, because like the tropics, Miami as well. Uh, for me, it's just too monotonous to have the same weather the whole time mostly. So, yeah, I just can't wait for the snow now. <laughs> and that hey, like, y'all, I, I mean, it's generally, like, so we, are, I'm on the coast here, and so, like, 70s is, like, the peak high for us. Like, if we get mid-70s, it was fucking hot, you know? So, like, um, what we do, we mm. creep down into the 50s the last couple nights, though. So, like, as we've been waking up, me and the wife have been real chilly in the morning, and we're like, we're not turning on that heater just yet. It's still early October. We can make it to November. We don't need that heater just yet. But we did throw down some uh, some vegetable soup last night. So it's soup season for us, kind of like you're saying. Uh, you know, when that season starts to the feels, you know, um, while uh, hot macchiatos and uh, new coffees. I don't really drink too much coffee. But well, other, except for that Captain's Brew, y'all. I got to tell you, that Captain's Brew is absolutely <laughs> fire. All right. <laughs> Oh, I, I need to get a I need uh, to get a mug like now. you guys. I for those that watched last week, I left it unfortunately in New York, but um, I'm gonna get one. Don't worry, I'm gonna be drinking out of one, one soon. A team Diamond Hands and a team maybe Neda for sure, for sure. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yours was very special. If I fly for back somebody. to New York, I'm gonna go to the same Airbnb and knock on his door and be like, "Hey, man." Uh, this is really weird, but I stayed here and there's a mug with my face on it. Can I please have it back? <laughs> <laughs> That's my face. That's my F face. Hey, you know, some, random, some random dude up in New York just sitting there <laughs> sipping on a team of Tare cup every yeah. morning. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know what this whole team <laughs> yeah. thing is about, but I kind of like it. I, I'm team Atari. <laughs> Yeah. He's, oh, Captain's Brew. Like, what is this? What is this all like about? That. Mm. Oh, my God. I wonder if he's looked up the damn show. <laughs> maybe he's know, a listener. Word coffee. Like, maybe he's now a listener. Maybe. Maybe we got a new fan. Hey, hey uh, sir. If you're listening. Uh, Rajesh, I stayed with you in New York a few weeks back at the end of September. If you're now a listener, please treat that mug with care. I will want it back one day. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. Anyways. This is too funny, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. One day um, you're going to see If it anything, again. there's more mugs for us in the future. Uh, speaking of mugs, uh, Diamond, you had a pretty pretty excited mug when you minted your Kagami. How are you feeling? 
uh, super hyped. I mean, I don't know if you saw it, but two weeks ago, I was like, whack me, please. Just one time, whack me, please. Right. And like, rub, hey, we rubbed the thimble. We all clicked our heels. Right. And we all managed to get lucky again. I'm just saying, Atari, I feel like there's like some stuff. We, we, I mean, we know how to pump the juju around mm-hmm. here for what it's worth. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but super hyped. Um, the 10 KTF dot shop, uh, 10 KTF dot shop. Yes. Uh, they have their opening up. They've, they've shown us some peeks at some Kagami, some peeks at some of the uh, possible uh, comfy hoodies that are coming our way. And I am absolutely, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm big time hyped about it. We've been waiting for these physicals for a little while and to get like the initial peak at both. Um, super, super hyped. And then also like, I don't know if y'all noticed of it, but Wagner was in like this me bit style form in the last couple posts that we got, the last thread, right? Old me bit wag me, old paper we me bit wag me. Uh, jury, somebody posted something. Uh, I forgot who it was. Sorry, y'all. Uh, but somebody posted something asking like, "Oh yeah, hey, this this paper wag me and me bit style, like, is that gonna come in the packaging for the <laughs> Kagami as well?" And Jury made sure to put some eyes on it. <laughs> so like, low key alpha. Might be having little me bit boxes, little cardboard, little wagmies. We could be jumping around with. Hey, we'll be doing a uh, puppet. We'll be doing puppet displays on screen, huh? We'll be jump, jumping out of it. Hey, Wagme said, wah, 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 wah. you know? Anyways. I don't know. Like, it looks like there is something inside their head. It's a box. Oh, it's a box. So what I would do as soon as I get it yeah. is like try to open the head. <laughs> is there something inside here? I don't know. It seems like. It's carrying something, I, but I don't know. I feel know, like you guys are, this is getting way crazy. too tinfoil here. <laughs> I want to, my, my, my thinking on that was it's just <laughs> t- the Toads made little puppets so that he could tell his own story because he was like, he wanted to, he wanted the puppet master in his mind. The Toads is, you know, manically obsessed about controlling New Tokyo. And when he lost control and he's like, I still have to have some control. And so that's how he's coping. That's my tinfoil actually. <laughs> he's coping with some puppets yeah it makes sense (laughs) i'm hoping somebody out there in our community will uh create a finger toad you know get some finger toads going have wag me going and create a little scene a little uh irl scene immersive style uh puppetry you know i I don't know who's doing it out there i know uh (laughs) my scene queen does a lot of cosplay she's got the wag me cosplay we know we had a lot of creatives out there i'm just saying some yeah. Y'all. Get the cloth board out and start making it happen, y'all. So somebody in the community is going to tell a beautiful story. I asked Diamond how he felt. Have you mentioned your Kagami? And if so, how do you feel now that all the madness of the Kagami is behind us and we can kind of just appreciate what, what's to come very soon? I, I feel good. I am super happy that I got my Kagami and uh, I'm minting it. I minted it. I'm going to get it. Uh, even if I'm not super excited about the physical, not because it's not great, but again, I'm also still in that position that I'm moving, that I, I, I don't want to like accumulate too much stuff in this apartment. Uh, I have plans of buying an apartment, so I will have to move eventually so too much stuff that like i'm not too much into physical stuff even if it's not actually what my closet is reflecting right now especially uh, especially if we talk about nft merch hoodies i have like a ton so but we're gonna talk about hoodies later um yeah no like the kagami yes i'm super happy because obviously having been on in a 10 KTF since day one. And this is going to be a celebratory dynamic art that goes on the Kagami. We still don't know what's this dynamic art is going to uh, be displaying. Like there is a lot of speculation. My, my speculation, or let's say the thing that I agree with the most mm, picking from uh, uh, other things that I heard also from others is uh, that there's going to be some right. special art for us. I don't want to say it's going to be people art, guys. Okay, that's not, I don't want to go too crazy. But I think that the dynamic NFT is not going to be only our PFP displayed there on the Kagami, and that's it. I'm expecting some kind of special different art that we're going to get with that NFT. And uh, that's why I am kind of excited. As a good DJ, I'm more excited about the NFT than the, 
than the digital than the digital display itself. Like I just can't wait to see that NFT the the drops on our uh, wallet once we we burn uh, the the initial token. Um, and yeah, I'm super grateful, super happy. Um, it's just uh, closes the whole year for me. Uh, season one. Um, it's just the the perfect uh end of the the whole season when you uh look at the kagami you're gonna always think back to like that first year oh yeah that that first year uh what a crazy year uh, of 10 ktf and so i guess when you put it like that that is a pretty special piece because i've been debating uh i'm uh i'm with you maybe where i don't like to accumulate too many physical things especially because i'm i'm being very nomadic right now where i'm moving every few months or so to new undisclosed locations um because my enemies are after me <laughs> and so and so um, for me um i'm i was split and i am still split on like do i do i sell the kagami um or do i keep it and redeem it um but i don't want to let this piece go and like regret it like a year from now or even six months from now because when you think about it like yeah you could probably buy like another kagami like the actual physical item but you you would be getting it without the the digital nft and without that it's not like as special or as real in my mind anyway and so there is really only going to be mm -hmm. 893 of these floating around so i i even wonder if some people that have redeemed you know, you redeem it and then you don't open it and then you sell it. Like uh, when you sell the NFT, you also ship the actual physical as well because I feel like that that could mm -hmm. be an interesting thing. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm split on it. I'm obviously super pumped that I that I was also lucky enough to mint one. Um, but with uh, with some moves coming in the not too distant future for me, I'm I'm you know thinking about what the right move for me is. I hoped, and I said it last week. I hope that it was a unlimited open window and unfortunately it isn't so it, ex it you have to redeem it by the 23rd i believe yeah um uh, the, so the wait list actually opens up tomorrow on the 17th and so there's only about 100 and maybe 30 140 kagamis that haven't been minted as of like last i checked and then the wait list opens up and then i think there's gonna be a pretty crazy three-day window of people buying and redeeming off a of secondary as well because these are now going to start to get burned as well so you'll see the supply dwindling and as the minute and hour gets closer to the expiry it'll be it'll be that same dynamic that we saw last march with the gucci token where uh it was a rush to the minute of mm -hmm. uh when the tokens expire quote unquote so um it's gonna be interesting to see <laughs> all of that happening and i think we're gonna be on live when all of that's going down so <laughs> it'll be fun to track that with uh, with everybody in the community yeah, there's a couple of things that I thought of yeah. as you're mentioning all that, Atare. One is like, how many of my parents do I get to put on this dynamic NFT? Right. You know? Like I've, I'm lucky enough now to have collected a few parents, right? When I first got in this, no parents at all. But now I've got like four of them. And I'm like, which, which fucking parent am I going to put on? If I've got to choose, do I get to put them all? What does dynamic exactly mean? Is that going to change continued into the future? Um, is it going to be a one-time stamp? You know, um, what does that look like? And then I've got some other ideas as well, but like, do you think that there'll be an opportunity for a future update? Is this just this one time dynamic? Or do you guys think that it might end up stamping? We might get a couple opportunity for a different rotation through there. I might reach out later and say, hey, uh, feel free. We're gonna do a second round. Um, if you'd like a different NFT or if that's already put into the metadata of what NFT you want, and then they'll update on their on their side what images will go into the Kagami. What do y'all think? To me, it's a it'll be dynamic of like you can display whatever you want. You just have to update it on your end. That's how I see this playing out. Maybe how about you? I hope it's gonna be like that. To be yeah. honest, and it makes uh, sense because, um, well, I, anything can happen with our NFTs. We can sell them, uh, exchange them, gift them. Like if I put one NFT and it's forever in my Kagami, that PFP and maybe that PFP, you know, I change it and I don't know. It's it's weird. I think that it, it should give you 
the, the possibility to change uh, what you're displaying there. Um, like it's an ele- like electronic device that has to display yeah. something. I expect that we have the freedom to choose what's on the display. Um, even though I, I think that the team has, uh, they have the power to choose what goes on the dynamic NFT that they're going to drop us. And, and do you think, that's, do you think that's that'll what be I like think. Uh, classic art, like some of the artwork we've seen? Or do you think that they might add like some IRL video, some IRL photos from some of the LA, New York style Ooh. events? Or might those come into play later, right? That's one thing I've been at a cool way to kind of add an extra dynamic to that. that I, I love that, actually. I think I, I don't want to get too far into speculation of, of what's going to be on it because I think oftentimes it's it's not as crazy as sometimes the uh what we end up speculating but it would be cool to see like flashes of all the art from the twitter timeline and then also i think huge portions of that all that we've won and lost was stuff from the irl events and so um yeah that, that'd be interesting to see like some videos and, and footage of that um again I, it's probably an experiment for them as well they're going to see what works what doesn't work um and we've already seen some of the stuff that's been on there where you have, you see the thimbles floating in the scissors and the tapes um, in the IRL events. And then we've seen the videos where Figgy's Ape pops up as well. So we, we kind of have an idea of like what we can display on the physical. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see how, how all this plays out. Um, I think one thing you have to also remember is that we've saw these in December, January, so close to a year ago, and they now released them. Uh, and they're gonna, you know, get to us by maybe January is is what I think I saw, or maybe that's the hoodies. But let's get into both of those. But it's like all of this requires a lot of work to get to that point. And so the idea of Kagamis, you know, have been in the mind for at the very minimum a year. We saw them as videos and then as physicals in January and March, respectively, and all of the work that's been going on in the back end to get to this point where we can now purchase and actually get them as items and objects and all the technical stuff that needs to go in with the dynamic NFTs and updating and all of that. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot, obviously, moving pieces. We just get to see only the output, which is the final, like, 1%. But to get to that point, it's like a shit ton of work. So just kudos to the team on, on, on that. And you can, that leads into the next thing, that every Kagami holder and... OGs and congratulations to the new OGs that just made the ranks. Congratulations to to all the new people yeah. um, that are now in the official OG club. Uh, both of us uh, are getting one free hoodie uh, on 10 KTF shop. So maybe what the bleep are these hoodies? Okay, so uh, you know that we have been seeing uh, sneak peeks in the past. There was like a very uh, famous tweet uh, with a video with all these different uh, hoodies displayed. So it was like uh, coming soon, but then it was like quite a while ago. So soon TM as always. Um, but um, And then uh, NFT uh, NYC. Uh, some people were able to see this um these hoodies at the Moonbirds event and they were like those are 10 KTF hoodies like that's the style like it was recognizable so we understood that hoodies were coming pretty soon at least after NFT NYC and now finally we can get our hoodies um I'm super excited for this uh fortunately that for us like OGs and new OGs, congrats uh, again! Uh, every time there is something dropping, they do uh, they open the OG uh, uh, spots again. They give more OG uh, roles to more people because obviously they want to continue to uh, um, reward the people that are uh, engaged with the project, that they are you know uh, part of the community, even if they entered the project later. So to all the people that are not OG. 
your moment will come if you're enjoying your time in, in on Discord and you're part of the community. Uh, just look at it like that. Just don't go for the grind. Just enjoy your time in there, and it's gonna happen. So many people. Uh, like I just want to shout out like a couple of people. Just uh, Yelena. You're amazing. So happy you got the OG. Uh, Crypto Taryn got the OG. Uh, ben Mayer White got the OG. <laughs> so like, it's a, I'm I'm missing a lot, but like, I just uh, some people that I had the pleasure to talk with uh, recently, and they really really deserve this gift. Uh, so all OGs are gonna have an airdrop. Okay, they will receive a token, a Coffee Woody token, and this token will be burned to redeem a physical hoodie with the PFP of your choice, like one of the PFPs that you hold. So uh, now the problem is to choose the PFP because like, okay, we get one for free for this airdrop. Then we get one for free when we mint our Kagami. So that's another reason for mint your, to mint your Kagami, Atari, uh, that you get an extra... <laughs> token uh who did comfy hoodie token so like for the people that were lucky like me i'm gonna have two um uh hoodie uh tokens so now the choice um what what will i cho choose oh, i have my um pfp number one which is regina the wow uh but i have already a lot of stuff with wow and with regina i have a jeans jacket with regina that it's like handmade incredible i have another hoodie that i couldn't wait for 10 ktf so i made it myself <laughs> like i ordered it myself with the uh, regina in front uh so i don't know i'm sh for sure getting my mutant on a on one of these two hoodies because i have nothing with my mutant since i started like since i got into the uh board yacht club uh there was no merch there's no merch yet uh, so I, I want my mutant and something and uh, um, and then probably I'm going to get Regina because she's just Regina. She, I, I can't not. <laughs> I, I still have to think about it because I, I got a lot of stuff with her, as I said, but um, maybe I'm, I'm going to get it with her as well. I don't know. What, what do you guys, what are you guys thinking? What are your, you know, what's your strategy with the hoodie? Are you minting them? Are you getting them? Uh, for me? I mean, I'm gonna, I, well, like you said, luckily I got the Kagami and I got my OG roll. So I'm going to get two hoodies. Right. Uh, and then me and the wife, we were kind of going through earlier this morning and, and peeking at some stuff. Um, my, like as much like my, wow's my grail, my Oni's my first parent, right? I got my Gucci grail to my Oni. Right. And there's this like possible Gucci application. Right. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw Bren Swass tweet, but Bren Swass sent out a tweet that like somebody asked in the discord, like Biggie, give us some alpha related to the Gucci grails. And he says, looks comfy. Mm -hmm, right. I was and there. so like for him to pl reply, looks comfy. We know that those, the Gucci, gra the Gucci grail material says uh, level one physical item on it. Right. So like, we all think something Gucci eventually, right? For for Figgy to say looks comfy, like we know the the hoodies are are comfy hoodies, right? We got cat ear hoodies and comfy hoodies. That's comfy hoodies are the only thing, and like I don't know, right? But like we were talking about it on New Tokyo News, and if I can put my Gucci Grail onto this hoodie, right, and then make it a Gucci hoodie, or if I could just like not and use my, I mean, uh, my wizard. Y'all, my new wizard uh, looks amazing on a hoodie. And so, like, I'm going to probably, one's going on this, uh, one's going on my WoW, and one's going on my wizard, unless some additional, like, applications for possible Gucci Grail. Like, if I put my Gucci Grail on a hoodie, I'll do that for sure, because I have the IP for the original parent. But I don't know that that's an issue or what that might look like, right? Um, and if it happens to be Gucci, well, then I'll do the Oni because um, it's related to the Gucci Grail. But um, uh, if we can, let me, Atari, what are you gonna mint? Obviously, like you gotta, you gotta throw the, the you gotta throw the mutant on that bad boy. Yes, right? like, yes, yes. Sorry, I'm just uh, <laughs> my lighting is getting very uh, shady right now. Like you see how it's like I'm trying to figure that out. Um, no, okay. What am I gonna put on my? Um, duh <laughs> my mutant the fucking cyborg guy with that 
dumb grin like that mutant is my boy uh also like um i it, it's one of those things <laughs> where uh i was lucky enough to you know mint a mutant way back when and um it's like people are looking to mint with board apes and mutant apes more than some of the other parent projects and so for me i'm like it doesn't cost literally it cost me nothing uh to uh and if people want to rock my mutant i'm more than happy for them to get an a piece that they want to hang up on a wall that's what some some people said they're going to frame it and put it up on a wall and whatever and for them it's like it's not just about the mutant or like my mutant it's about the mutant or having like a mutant or a board ape um because it's kind of like they're the face of nfts and so yeah it doesn't cost me anything and so i'm like yeah happy to mm -hmm. if anybody wants to rock this mutant i think it's a i think it's the best looking mutant um out there no question uh obviously i'm biased <laughs> it's for no. me it's the grin no, the cyborg not. eye the clean look i it's the best looking mutant in the history of nfts and so <laughs> so if people want to rock it then um please like I, i'd love to help you guys out and uh again it doesn't cost me anything it's it's free it's it's goodwill for free and goodwill is free so um there's no expectation or anything and so um i'm definitely going to be rock getting a mutant i have one more uh, hoodie that I'm going to think about what I want to put that on or put on that might be my toads. Um, I might just keep it and, you know, maybe sell it. I don't know yet, but that's, that's my plan. Maybe I, I'm hearing some uh, producers telling me you have a deep disagreement on the most beautiful looking mutant. Please, <laughs> please uh, enlighten us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a big disagreement. No, no. It's like, it's not about me. It's more about the fact that I showed my mutant, um, hoodie in the thread that I created that I'm going to talk about it and it just yeah. got like a ton more reaction than yours so I'm sorry it's like it's the people chose Maybe not I, I, me you know what that might have been a timing thing I, nobody told me to put a, put a <laughs> to put a photo yeah. Let's put it. Let's put it. Yeah, yeah. Find let's excuses. Put it, let's put it yes. on the Dan Twitter. Like, which mutant is more beautiful? <laughs> let's put the hoodies, not the mutant Fine. by you itself. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see which hoodie would you get? Well, I don't know. For for folks that have that type of plug and pull, like if you're friends with Taylor, Ashera, or Leor, right? Like if you're friends with somebody that has an M3 mutant, right? Like. There's nothing stopping anyone from producing multiple on that. Like you could have an M3 hoodie and be doing branding, right? For for Leor, for Ashera, or for Taylor and their mutant and what they've got going on. That would be nasty as fuck. Now that I'm thinking, yeah. I might have to hit someone in the DMs one time and just check up on this. Facts. <laughs> yeah, imagine like mega that's mutants. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's the whole idea. The whole idea of the thread uh, was. Um, I've been talking about it also on New Tokyo News. Uh, the whole idea of the thread was to uh, give a PFP to people that don't have a PFP. And not only those people, also people that uh, maybe they they are looking for an ape or a mutant uh, for their for their hoodie. Because let, let, let's be honest, like the whole reason also why I got a mutant, it's like... Um, the, the the board apes uh, are kind of the face of NFTs or like the, the number one projects and everything. So it's like we all kind of look up to them. Um, so offering our mutants, Mia, Tare, and uh, Wows, from, I've seen Ir Iridashi, uh, she put all her Wows. She was like, pick, just let me know if you want any of those. And um, the reason is like... Um, to to give people possibilities to to make people understand and feel that uh, it doesn't matter if it, it if, even if they don't have a pfp that they like or they don't have a pfp at all that we are a community we're going to look out for them it doesn't cost me anything to really do that uh and i'm actually happy to do it uh, also we have a we have a safe way to do it uh, without sharing, uh, without sharing addresses, without sharing anything, we would just uh, we can just connect with Worm uh, with one of their wallets. Then they just b uh, they burn their token using one of our PFPs, and uh, that's super safe. And uh, it keeps also the two parts not not too involved. Like also sharing, like this is my home address. Like you, I know, like in Web three, that that's a bit too much uh, to say. Uh, so 
uh, the the thread is engraved and it's called uh, PFP for Comfy U, the exchange, something like that. Uh, so just go there if you if you wanna if you wanna offer your PFPs or if you're looking for a PFP, and uh, let us know if uh, you prefer my mutant or other. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> Um, That's the my, most important part. Speaking of addresses, part. the address that I'm going down <laughs> is under one, two, three, undisclosed location. <laughs> In undisclosed location, PO box <laughs> undisclosed. <laughs> Please get it to me ASAP. I need it tomorrow. <laughs> Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. <laughs> well, I... Also, I wanted to Gucci. talk to one second about Gucci. Because Diamond was talking about it. And, uh, okay, first of all, they dropped... I, I got some client um, uh, ac access to the new collection, which was not through the NFT, but through the fact that I bought with them before. So that's like something also that made me understand, ah, okay, so they're kind of giving the perks of previous customers to people that have Gucci Grail. Uh, so like just another like how to put the utility um, in comparison with what's happening in the in real life world like how do other people get the same perk so um, being a previous customer gives you uh, access to to some collections early on um, and I saw the new collection and you can see the hoodies are like 17 16 seventeen hundred dollars like I was like okay okay this is Gucci prices and uh, um, with what Diamond was saying um, that he was connecting the, the hoodie with the PFPs with the Gucci Grail uh, in, in my opinion what I've always seen maybe it's just because of taste because like I would really like it what I've seen working it's the Gucci vault pattern so the exact pattern that you see in the Gucci material so no a PFP at all, no Gucci grill at all, just a mm. hoodie with the oh, Gucci gnarly. vault uh, pattern, which is super cool. Like I love it, but so probably it's just I'm biased because I love the pattern. And if they will be asking me like, do you want one of these? And uh, you have to burn a, a comfy hoodie token and a, a Gucci no material. No question. I'm no doing question. it right away. Like. No question. <laughs> Give or, me that Gucci. <laughs> or even it. like as like a backlay, like so. I don't know if you've seen it, but in Gucci, uh, Figgy Rocks is Gucci jacket, right? And it's got like a a low tone mm -hmm. pattern. It's not loud, right? But there's like those Gucci G's mm -hmm. all over the thing, right? But it's like low key, almost like a yeah. uh, under layer. And then we see the stripes in the current hoodie, right? You can see like the striped pattern running down the hoodie. Um, what if flip that stripe pattern? and put like low key G's running down it, right? As an additional layer, secondary layer. Mm -hmm. It's not the straight Gucci. I get what you're saying, Neto, with that like Gucci vault style, Gucci vault, the Gucci pattern, um, but there's- No, no, I mean the vault yeah, pattern, yeah. Yeah, the multiple, Gucci vault. Yeah, the yeah, stripes. with the stripes that they're doing. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. The, the wavy, yeah, yeah. uh, the more hippie dip style stripes, right? Uh, and even if that color pattern ends up happening, one thing that I think about is like the the Kagami, like G, that G ball that people posted. Like if they could rotate that G ball through just mm -hmm. as like a, a flash, right? Would you need to own the art? I don't know how that works, right? But like, I'm sure people wouldn't mind gifting that to we knew to be able to have the IP on, right? To run through the whatever their system they're running through. So like long-term hopeful, right? Like, just to be able to flash that G through or that rise with wag me, right? To have a piece of a people flashing through it, my fucking, even at my desk. I know it's a big ask, but I think it'd be something that's super cool. Um, and then one- But you mean the, the every everyday? Every day. Like yeah, to, to give flash through the Kagami. The people every like day? It's just yeah. one portion. Okay. It's not that we would own the art, right? That's definitely, we knew side of what they own mm -hmm. on the dynamic end. But like for us to just be able to have that flash through even as one moment, part of something that we gained and we lost along the journey. You know what I'm saying? Um, that would be dope. Uh, but that's hopium. That's a lot of hopium. One thing that I think is not so much hopium <laughs> that I think is an actual reality um, that I just thought of is within the description to the Kagamis, it says that these are the key to physicals, mm. right? And the 10 KTF story, right? 
like when we think about that, like being a key and also noticing that we're all getting free freaking hoodies from having Kagamis just on its initial outset, yeah. it makes me start to think because I'm like, do, uh, is that going to happen for all the OGs? Like, are we just all going to get free hoodies? Like when the cat ear hoodies, all OGs are getting free cat ear hoodies again, a free token again, or what does that look like? I don't think that that's going to continue to be free into the future. If you're asking me for all OGs, I think for this round, maybe for a couple other rounds, but I think if you're holding a Kagami, right, based on the key to physicals, the, the description that's on the Kagami right now, um, I, I think that there's an opportunity that if you do have that Kagami, you're good for physicals, at least one, one set, right? There's only 893 of them. It's very limited as far as the larger collection is concerned. And so for me, like, just to think the team, that's 900 that they got to earmark as far as they're not going to get their return of ape coin that you'd, you'd have to purchase with otherwise, which like, and understand that's all coming back to us through Battletown in our allotments, right? So like the give and take and the ebb and flow, I just, I think that there's a possibility that these Kagamis could end up having future returns and physicals for us along the long term. It's, it's possible. I think it would, um, it would give that that nft additional utility the dynamic art token that wouldn't you know would be a very exclusive 893 people only i think that um it would get tricky with the aftermarket stuff because uh you you would then be selling the token without the physical um because the physical is already redeemed and shipped and so it'd be curious to see how they would uh, resolve that um but i mean uh, one thing I do know is that this team is iterative. They they're not tied to what their initial use case was. It it's it's a dance between the between the mm -hmm. community. And so if there's an idea from the community that they think can really work well, they they will incorporate it in their own way. And so they're always listening. They're always I think taking in feedback and and measuring sentiment. And so it's like you you really never know. Um, maybe Kagamis are more. Maybe they're not. But it's uh, I'm I'm excited for 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 this week just to see like the activity in the aftermarket because there's only 893 and um, how uh, and how quickly will these be burned and uh, yeah what's the effect on the tokenomics and the price and all of that so it's always a fun thing and I think the Discord enjoys it as well because when the Kagami started minting everybody was following like the floor price is dropping list for cheaper oh my god that offer it got sold it was like a play yeah. play by play like how, how it happens in sports so <laughs> yeah yeah i'm just i mean to like a thousand bucks is a thousand bucks mm -hmm. right 200 ape coin is like basically one eth right now right and so like to see the price of kagamis at one eth and knowing that they cost 200 ape coin either way i mean we're talking about plus or minus $200 here as far as difference yeah. in price, right? In totality. And so like, if you really wanted yeah. to get a Kagami, that opportunity is there for you. And even the people that got the allow list, like there's $200 in utility there yeah. for you. You know what I'm saying? If you wanted to consider it in those larger contexts. Yeah. But um, so, so for me, like seeing yeah. that market stay relative to the initial mint price, um, is as much as like, oh yeah, oh, if I was trying to flip, oh man, if it would have went to three, like, I'm not going to lie. I might have thought about flipping mine and not getting a Kagami. But like to see it stay really standard at that price that it minted out at, it's just it, it's it's bullish for the long term and for people that didn't get have an opportunity to get in initially. So in the past few weeks, we've heard a lot about uh, a potential Oni acquisition. I know there was some stuff happening with their CEO and the board and um, some disagreements with respect to payment. And uh, it's a much maligned project. Like there's no other way to put it. It's if you look at the Oni OpenSea Oni page, it's you see Mount Everest and then you see the longest slope downhill. Um, for the past year plus. And so everybody's been waiting for something to happen and everybody thinks that the solution is for a fresh start, like a true fresh start, meaning all the old people that ran the project, the founders, there's a complete turnover. There's no more involvement. There's no more, you know, like them ownership, anything like that. And so true ownership is really what is going to be, in my opinion as well, the phoenix that's going to rise from the ashes of of the past year of Oni. Now, we've uh, we've seen Cameron, who runs non fungible films NFF, 
he's been tweeting some very you know only related type um tweets like for example one of them was i'm on one today and so everybody's like, I emoji, I emoji, monocle emoji, shut up, Hideaki. And so everybody <laughs> everybody has been thinking. And so yesterday or a couple of days ago, Cameron came out with the whole thread saying to tame down the speculation. Uh, I am, I've put an offer to purchase Oni. I think it's one of the most dynamic, incredible IPs out there. And I'm really excited to get a chance to own it if the board approves and to really have it be reborn the reason he put that out and he jumped on on a twitter space with polaris and bobby they do the rise with wagmi spaces the reason he came out with that thread was because he was getting hit up by people saying oh i'm so happy you bought oni i'm gonna buy it now and he's like no no, no i haven't done it yet i've just sent the offer so Alpha was leaking out and Cameron had a lot of in- interesting things to say on that Twitter space. And uh, he talked about how a lot of these projects and NFTs could just get a bunch of money really quickly. And the people that run the projects haven't built a business, don't know how to build a business, possibly don't have the motivation to build a business because the hard part is done. They have millions of dollars in their treasury. And you get into this giant malign. I think even, even back in... Um, early February when I was doing my daily DGen videos, that was one of the things I talked about was that the model for NFTs is broken where everybody that starts an NFT project tells themselves and their team, we're going to be the next Board Ape Yacht Club. Watch us. Everybody starts with that motivation. But then as the excitement and motivation leads up to the mint, they, they're like, yeah, we minted out. We're Board Ape Yacht Club. We're going to do it. And then over time, you know, setback after setback, when the real process of actually building a business starts, it's like you release something, it doesn't go as planned, and your motivation, it's still high, but it's now like 90%. So instead of being like, yeah, it's like, yeah. And then over time, as the stuff that you do maybe doesn't work and doesn't resonate, your motivation dips. It's like, and it's like, you have millions of dollars, you're distracted, you can do whatever you want, you can fly, travel, go to parties. Um, why are you going to like, slave over trying to build a business and that's 99 percent of these projects maybe i know you had some things to say about that as well yeah it was uh very interesting to hear uh cameron speak on that uh on that space and uh, congrats again and kudos to polaris and uh and bobby uh because it was an amazing space thank you guys for setting that up uh yeah it's like um again we go back to the uh, initial thoughts like to, to the initial strategy of all of us like why we invested in 10ktf in the first place we always have to consider that uh, it's not only about the hype it's not only about the floor price or you know all these shiny things around an nft project it goes to the core team who are the people that are operating the project what is the reason between that why are they doing it so when you find a project and you do your research and you see that the founders the people that are running it really have the right reasons and they have the right uh knowledge expertise like that's where Mm -hmm. it's easier to put your money on that's why uh all of us from the beginning like after we minted our high tops as degens, like at least Diamond, you came uh, in after you you bought from someone else. But when I minted, it was a degen move. That's why that's why I minted only one. I was like, "What is this project? Like, I don't know anything about it." Okay, I just want a pair of shoes. Whatever. If it goes to zero, I don't care. But then after, when we did our research mm-hmm. and we saw who was behind it, then everything changed for us. We became the diehard. 10 KTF community that we are because we're like these people are the right people and we heard it today as well also when Luca Nets yeah. came into New Tokyo News and he gave a bit of a his uh, thought about the whole project and he said again that what 10 KTF is doing is so different and the, the, the team itself they're they're excellent people uh, and that's the thing with, with what Cameron was saying. A ton of money doesn't make a great team because in the NFT space, you can really make money, raise money for a million reasons that are not necessar- like necessarily cor- correlating with your knowledge or with the, with the um, 
how the experience or whatever you're going to be able to, for whatever reason, you're going to be able to run that business and run it in a, in a, in a great way. Like, that's not why you get the money in the first place. It could be also because of hype, because the art is great. Also that. So many different different reasons we saw with Oni. Uh, that's exactly what happened. So again, do your own research. Check who are these people, who are the founders. Um, and then after that, you can really take a decision to, you know, go deep into into something. And I'm so sorry that so many people got uh, burned with Oni. Like we have a lot in our community, people that really still have uh, bad feelings um, towards the, the whole project and the founders. And they have obviously their reasons for it. I cannot say right. that they are completely wrong, but... Uh, they have they have the right reasons also to 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 be like that, um, but I'm super excited to hear that like I've been waiting for a while uh, for Oni to be uh, bought out by someone because uh, it's a beautiful project. I'm Oni older as yeah. well. Uh, I love the art. Uh, I'm complex. You know, uh, we we talked about it also uh, in the Sun interview. It's like his art is amazing. So. I really can't wait for Oni to to come back and to be, you know, uh, operated by a real team of uh, people with expertise, the people that know what they're yeah. doing and they have the right reasons and the right uh, the, the right goals uh, in front of them. So I'm very hopeful. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm naive, but uh, I'm, I'm really, I really think that this is gonna be good for for Oni and uh, yeah, the whole community deserves it. Yeah. I think um, I it's part of the reason why I've been very tempered with even thinking about launching any sort of NFT project because I know that once you do, you your holders are your shareholders, your uh, the people you answer to, and so. Um, you really have to think about uh, what it is you're building, what is your plan, what is your vision for the future, and then map against that. And then, and then here's the question that nobody wants to, or not a lot of people think about when they when they launch a project. It's do you want to be doing this for the next three to five years? Because that's that's in a sense what you're signing up for when you when you do make that sort of commitment. Or more, yeah. At the very minimum, or it's more. three to five, but it's more. likely way more than that. And so you have to really ask yourself these questions. And, and for people that, you know, you launch a project and you can get 500K to like $3 million off of a mint in in a span of like from start to finish four to six months from thinking about the project to launching, like many people are just easy money. Go, just go, go get it. And then... Um, whatever happens after happens. And it's like my horizon for going full-time to Web3 was I'm thinking in decades. At the very minimum, the next decade is is uh, is what I'm dedicated. And so I'm not going to do something in year one that, I, that I'm not sure that I'm going to be uh, fully into on year four, five, six, and seven and burn my reputation this early on just to get the bag this early on. Um, when I when I do something and when we do something and I think because I speak for all of us when we all do something I know that we do it for real we don't just half ass it to to just whatever ha go with the motions and so it's like I I do wish a lot more people maybe thought about it like that and um but that's kind of what happens when 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 people don't and Oni is a great example of a project that uh that I that I that I know I believe it's that there was no real plan beyond the initial mint to build out the business. It's because it's because they caught the hype and fire of Twitter, and it pumped like crazy that everybody on the team was like, "Shit, okay, we got to do something now. We got to build something." And so, um, it was it's an unfortunate you know telltale situation. It's the poster child of like of of what not to do, I think, and it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yeah, um, and we're seeing the secondary effects of that right now. I don't know if y'all saw it, but uh, like um, uh, JR put out a thread, right? Like addressing his past misgivings, the mental health issues he's went through since the initial blowback. Because like everyone, like the initial only meant like his big thing was like going to buy a Lambo, right? Like JR's Lambo is all I heard about when I first got in fucking NFTs. I didn't even know who the dude was, right? 
mm-hmm. but to see him at least like take some public onus and like walk through the fire as well right and like state that like regardless of what happens i just want to do what's right for the project like we can see like there's there's a difference between narrative building and real action right and so to see star lordy be put in a position that he was right where shout out star lordy like doing what you've done like i have the world of respect for you dude <laughs> Um, like putting this all on your shoulders and, and, and moving through the fire as a as a medium for the community and the team on both ends, right? Like what a precarious position to be put in. Um, and, and you've handled that really, really admirably, right? Even for the good and the bad, because I'm sure there's other things that are happening behind the scenes that you can't exactly all put out, right? Mm-hmm. But when the time came that the boat went down and they decided not to provide the money that was promised, right? Um, at that point, that's, that's an unbreakable business point. You know what I'm saying? And so he had to stand up for himself. He had to do what he, what he had to do there. Right. And so now the larger community, we all start talking about this, but like, think about this in any other business facet, in any other part of like business, like you don't worry about shareholders, what they're thinking out in public. You don't have to worry about like CEO issues out in public. The way that NFTs are functioning right now in themselves, as far as project building and transparency, right? Like we see some some projects clamoring to to pull transparency back, and other projects are like, you know what, Azerbala, fuck it, that mint didn't go. You know, the previews didn't work out how we wanted them to. Obviously, the community's got some feelings about this. Let's host some spaces. Let's address this head on, yeah. right? And not just us as a community learning how to grow from these issues, but at the project level as well, right? And I think what you said, Atari, was a really beautiful thing, right? Like, there's a reason why some of us are being more patient in all this, right? Waiting to launch a project to get out there and say, you know what? Because I'm not going to lie, like, yeah, it'd be nice to have a bag, right? Like, and we always talk about like all the rugs, right? But I also think about like, all the amazing community members that are working hard in, in quality projects right now and not getting paid anything from it, right? It's a matter of time. We know what we're building for. We've got our fingers crossed, you know, but we've got to believe in the future of whatever this is. The one thing that I think that a lot of people fail to like realize, at least in my own personal perspective, is like, you know what, when, when you get stuck in a position that even sometimes maybe even projects, you know, aren't, aren't, aren't even like projects enjoy the work we do as community members, right? And we have these interpretations, these interpretations about launching our own projects because of the scam aspect of it, right? But at the same time, like, I got to be honest, like, I'm a creator, I'm a writer, I've been doing work for a long time in all this, right? We're content creators, but like, where's the, what's the right, I want to say this the right way. Uh, Where is the, uh, the opportunity for us in all this in the long term, if we're not launching a PFP project and world building and like and getting ready to do the the dungeon and, and dragon style build that is a, uh, a NFT world, right? Like there's there's multiple levels to what's going on in creation right now, you know. And I'm really happy to see you know the music side of things get adopted and what we got going on in photography and all these levels of arts, right? But I think. Just for me, it's just a a hope that we can start to see in the larger picture, the creatives and the artists that we really do have in a lot larger um, sorts of facets, I guess. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but for me, it's just like where this is all going to end up going to is going to be a very beautiful place. And I think there's going to be some opportunity for some of us that are, you know, not thinking on world building ends to end up having an opportunity, not the next board Ape Yacht Club, right? But what does opportunity look like in the future? And I'm excited to see what that day looks like. It was a great space. So shout out once again to Polaris and Bobby for just having a space there. And uh, like it happened with today with Luca Nets as well. He jumped up on New Tokyo News. You just have to stay prepared because you never know when uh, somebody big will jump up on your space. And so just be there, be ready to accept the blessings, keep a positive attitude mm-hmm. and uh, keep grinding away. And I think that's something that we strive to do at the damn show as well. We um, we don't really, I think, go behind the scenes a lot with our viewers, but we we hold each other down pretty strongly. And um, we, we talk through things and we spend a lot of hours, um, I think, just talking um, on video chat just to you know, bond with each other and and um, get to know each other better and help each other process situations, celebrate the wins, and I think it's uh, that's the ethos of 
that's what you're investing in is what I'm trying to say. When you when you buy into an NFT project, when you buy a stock, whatever, whatever it is, you're actually investing in in the people that are running it and the relationships that they have and how they move in the world. And so it's like for me, I, I look at the stuff that we have planned and what we're working on and um, I am endlessly bullish. I tell everybody this. I'm so damn bullish about the damn and 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 how how we're gonna do things and we're gonna shake things up in so many ways people have no idea what's coming and um and 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 i get excitement and joy when i when i think about that because i get a chance to do it with really cool people um i was at dinner with uh with um some ogs nano and van a couple days ago they were in uh, this undisclosed location of Miami, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and we were uh, Nano recommended a great restaurant. We were by the water, and uh, it was it was very nice. Um, I think Mitoshi described it as a, uh, or maybe it was Citan. Citan described it as a romantic dinner <laughs> between the three of us. But we all just sat down and we 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 talked about our wins we talked about the future the potential of what each of us are doing and we're building and um it really to me i think uh solidified how bullish i am on 10 ktfogs on on all the things that we're all doing and and how we're building and we have this network of ogs that we can tap into that we can trust i think that's the biggest thing it's not just about being an og it's about being somebody that you can trust and so with uh with them it's like i know that i can trust them and so uh we talk about everything we're very candid and you know they offer their feedback and um tell us where we're winning and and uh and and all everything in between and so um, there, there's something that we we thought about uh, that we, we'll reveal in due time to to everybody else. But uh, there's going to be something cool that that's being cooked up right now. I'm bullish on 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 so many things, and we're deep in the bear market, and we're still here, and we're still bringing excitement. So what like this is where you earn your scars and your stripes, and so I'm. It's a matter of time for us and and all the other creators that are doing really cool things and moving with really good energy. So I'm excited for that. I think one of the things you just said that resonates the d- most deeply with me is like bullish on 10 KTFOGs, right? Like this year has been an incredible, mm-hmm. like I was talking to Ace Snowman and he's like, you know what this, the, the education that I've got this year in NFTs through, through 10 KTF specifically has been fucking insane. And he might not have said it like that. That's probably me inferring the fucking piece, but like, it's been insane, right? And that's that's the reality of it. Like the hyperization of what we went through, the speculative sides of what NFTs quote unquote could be, right? Of what a project quote unquote could look like, uh, what we're doing at a community level as far as like building real relationships. Um, you know, having Hawk and, and Coin Christ in town last weekend, right? In my little town, we had a little 10 KTF meetup, right? Seeing when you're in Miami, you got to meet up with the homies. When you're in New York, you got to link up. When you're in Toronto, you got to link up with Kent. You know what I'm saying? Like people, you just, these, yeah. these spots, these locations, like the way that we've built community outside of the, the internet, outside of the Discord. I don't have to be in Discord anymore to make sure to know that Hawk and, and, and Coin Christ are coming up and kicking it at the house, right? Like that's, those are, that's sustainability, right? Like nothing, it's not going anywhere. So for me, it's been an incredible education in so many different levels. And I couldn't be more bullish on 10 KTFOGs either because I know the levels that they're learning. You know, I heard, I think Keegan mentioned when I show up at a, at an IRL event, like when I see someone, when I, when someone starts talking about 10 KTF, like when we connect on, like we could talk in uh, to NFTs and it's like, oh yeah, I know about that project. But when you talk about 10 KTF, there's a level of recognition that goes on there as far as like, no, you're really deep in the woods of NFTs too. Okay, awesome. Let's go a little <laughs> farther, right? I think I think that's something special, you know? Um, I don't know. Aneta does such a great job of holding these IRL events, right? And like, whatever they look like in the future, I'm really excited to keep continuing to build into, right? Um, because I didn't host it the right way. I went back and read the new Tokyo Rumor uh, article, Meta. I for sure did not plan and get anything together up front in the ways that I should have. I had no merch. I had no items. I know I fucked up. I know. But next time I've got the notes and the next IRL meetup up here in my little town is going to be absolutely fire. Uh, 
speaking of Perfect. speaking of okay. uh, community <laughs> building, um, I'm going to put it out there. Vote if there's a vote. I don't know how it's going to work, but community builder. I don't think there's anybody better that we've seen, and she is. She's one of us. She is within the community. She holds it down for us. She 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 flies out to other countries to make things happen. Uh, we have the one and only maybe Neda, and she. I nominated Diamond. You nominated her as well for the Community <laughs> Builder Award for the World of Women Gala, and so I think it's uh, it, it's a no brainer. She holds it down for us. She holds it down for World of Women. Uh, she is the goat of IRL events. It's her superpower. So everybody vote for maybe Neda when it does when it, when it is time. Uh, yeah. We love you, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, that's another. Uh, now that you br- brought it up, the WOW Awards. Oh, my God. Crazy. Um, my list of no- nominees was, like, so long. <laughs> like, I think I nominated 15 people or something like that. I don't know, 10, 15 people. And uh, I think I have to go back to that form <laughs> and add some people that I forgot. But, like, when when communities are, like, so strong and, and close to each other, especially when you spend a lot of time in a specific community, uh, like I did in a, in a WOW community, there are, like, so many names that come to your head, like... It's just so many people that you don't want to uh, leave behind that you want them to get the recogni- recognition for what they did because uh, every single thing was important. Every, uh, you know, um, participating in anything uh, at a com- community level creates that bond between people. Like, it's just, yeah. I don't know, I just want them to be recognized for it. So, uh, I'm just I just threw in there so many names and uh, thank you guys for nominating me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it, it felt a bit cringe to auto nominate myself. Like I, I didn't want to do it. Uh, when I was in the form, I was like, yeah, I'm in the form because I want to yeah. nominate someone else. <laughs> if someone is gonna nominate me, great, I'm gonna take it. Thank you guys. But I didn't want to nominate myself. It was weird um but yeah uh that's gonna be cool to see it's just that um uh, after the captains i'm i'm a bit scar- <laughs> scared with the um <laughs> with campaigning and campaigns i cannot like i'm just gonna tell people go to the form and vote the person that you prefer that, that's Meanwhile, gonna be my campaign like just check all the people just check all the people when, once the content starts to hit the streets you're gonna fire then, up your content machine too netta we all know how this is gonna work hey the content <laughs> machine will fire itself up i think that's kind of the beauty of community is you don't really have to speak up for yourself like that i know that you felt a little cringe about having to nominate yourself or whatever but like hey the community's speaking up for you right and i think that's the beautiful thing about nfts uh these relationships we can build so uh yeah i don't know netta community builder number one for sure uh if you're voting for anyone else i'm sure it's a good vote as well but it's definitely not put in the right place for what it's worth <laughs> the discount Ooh. for soulbind so when the episode is going to be out there's not going to be discount anymore but anyway the soul binding for uh sun is open and uh, yeah, w- I wanted to talk a bit about that. You guys, what you think about? Are you are you doing it? I got, Aren't you doing it? I got it? that Did diamond hand. The there ain't no way I'm not soul binding that diamond hand uh, with a 0.337 uh, ETH discount that's going on today. Um, like you said, it won't be available by the time we go to publish, but like... Mm. What an incredible utility, credible opportunity to get like, not only that, it provides initial numbers on San on their end, and then we'll see what that looks like going forth. But with that, I mean, it's half off today for that initial, and I'm only going on the the level one soul bind for the 0.337 myself, uh, but there's no way I can't do that with the diamond hand. And then there was a little alpha dropped, like, hey, whoever soul binds, like those NFTs are supposed to be getting a little bit of light in the background and a little bit of music I hear, right? So like there might be a little bit of an upgrade, dynamic uh, upgrade to those Mm. when they're getting bound down to have some sound and some lights in the background. So uh, low key alpha from Crow there. Yeah, I look, I've been so all over the place. I know which one I'm going to soul bind. 
It's just a matter of picking the level. I'm looking at level two with the discount. I think that works for, for what I want because mm-hmm. I think you, I'm I value the IRL perks a lot, and so uh, I'm planning on being at a lot more NFT events in general. And I, you can imagine, San will likely be there, and so how many plus <laughs> ones you have? <laughs> Because I'm getting the first level, <laughs> I can't afford the second level. <laughs> so I think because uh, I'm gonna get into the the first level, so right. that later on I can upgrade, uh, right. retaining retaining my discount. Uh, so yeah, is that the move? Um, there is no like you can retain think, the discount if you if you soul bind. Well, well, the discount is the same for right. all the levels. So if you if you do level one. Once the discount is over, it's like you paid 0. Right. 0.66, okay. not 0. 0.33. And then to, to it's one ETH to get to the other level. So, so the, I see it's like saying. you retain the saying. discount at the end of the day. So <laughs> that was my, my strategy behind, okay, I have to do it right now to just retain, it, even if it's not the level that I want. But I, I do this just to retain this discount and then I move I will move on to the other ones. Because obviously, yes, I I also want to go to the in real life events. Like like just yeah. That's yeah. like the number one thing for me. <laughs> absolutely. So uh yeah, I'm I'm gonna um cool. I'm gonna try later on to 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 get to level two. But anyway, we didn't say it. There are four different levels and you can find all of the information uh in the sun. Uh, website sunsound dot um, io I think it is. Don't be like double check. <laughs> but anyway, there are four levels, and uh, uh, yeah, they, they from le- level three, level four, they're kind of pricey. So uh, yeah, if, unless you're a diehard sun uh, supporter and you really want to go, like yeah, it's yeah. like you get yeah. also governance. Uh, when you get to those to to those levels, so you're really uh, much more uh, involved in in the whole uh, in the whole project. Uh, but it's cool. It's like the first time that like I love when there are things that I've never done before. It's the first time that that something like this is happening. So uh, really, congrats to the team that they created this yeah. new way of uh, uh, selling a a, pro- a project because it's kind of like the mint was free and now this is the way that they are actually uh, getting the investments. So you see which level, which perks you want, and and then you choose, and then your your NFT is so binded to your wallet. So. It's gonna be there forever, forever right? Forever, like there is no way to. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way to, yeah. to take it away from there, right? Um, technically, so that's that's cool. It's it's new, and I like when NFT projects try to do something different, something uh, revolutionary. I like it. So, congrats to the Sun team, Sun team for this. Uh, yeah, that they so set we gotta up. we Very gotta interesting. get going so we can start. Uh, to Soulbind because I think it takes it takes like at least uh, they're only open during business hours between nine to five p.m. and only on weekdays and so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> can you imagine Don't if the blockchain me. was only open Monday to Friday from nine nine a.m. to five p.m. and then the blockchain is now closed? <laughs> it's like I didn't get my transaction on time. <laughs> no, you cannot do it. Monday is a holiday. On Monday. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but by the way, since I started to talk about this soul binding, my Air- AirPods uh, died. Interesting. <laughs> oh. They were like, ah, this is what you're doing. Because you're <laughs> <Apple>. getting... <laughs> this is what you're doing. Now I'm going to leave you. Be that way. We're moving on. <laughs> so, yeah. They found they found out that I'm getting uh, sound sound. Uh, That's funny. You know. AirPods. I have a black camo. The, I do have a black camo background, so I'm supposed to get some special hardware. Ooh. When the hardware drops, y'all, I'm going to be getting some fire custom hardware there. Some, nice. some sort of special pattern on the outside. Maybe some fire red camo on that. Nice. But, um, yeah. So for, the re- for real this yeah. time, Diamond, why don't we end this episode the way we started? <laughs> Please take it away. Well, and don't forget to mention the coffee. Oh, yeah, you've got it. You've got it. Well, everybody, uh, it's been a wonderful episode here at The Damn Show. We really appreciate you tuning in. 
Uh, we were able to cover a bit about Sound Sound, cover a bit about Wow, cover a bit about the Kagamis, cover a bit about uh, hoodies, right? Uh, and a bit about a few other topics as well, looking at Oni Force and what's going on with that project. Uh, as you can see, Ned has got our uh, wonderful Captain's Brew blend of board coffee right now. Um, we've still got a few items of that left on the market. You can go to uh, the dam.show, correct? And correct. pick up your bag there. Don't forget to select whether you're getting the ground or the beans, right? Uh, I know I got the ground. What'd you end up getting, Netta? Yeah, ground. ground or the beans, whatever you're into. If you don't, if you're not mixing your beans hot at the house, make sure you get them ground up front. Uh, it's a great, wonderful blend, and we really appreciate everybody's support. Uh, once again, thank you for tuning in today. It's a great damn day at the damn show. Uh, a wonderful things coming around the corner, and we'll see y'all next week. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.